Welcome back to the Pink Floyd Collectors YouTube channel. Today I wanted to review a new book. It's by the respected author Glenn Povey. He's kindly sent me a copy of this uh, with the agreement by Weimar Publishing. The book is a look at Pink Floyd in North America from 1966 to 1983. So you say, could say covering the uh, Sid Barrett and Roger Waters years. And this is a look really at everything they've done in terms of releases and touring dates. First of all, before we start, I just want to talk about the quality of the book. The book's fantastic. It's very weighty, so it's going to look good on the shelf. Uh, good size as well. I will put the measurements in the description here, but I think you get an idea. You know, you're looking at about a hand and a half. Like I say, nice, solid, well-produced back and front. And those of you that know Glenn's work previously, he basically began with the Pink Floyd UK's uh, fanzine, Brain Damage, and has gone on to write some very informative books over the years, which a lot of Floyd fans use as resources to help their collection. So opening the book, we get a nice double page spread there, nice pin up of the group in their prime, you could say. I think this is from the 1972 early photo shoot, I think. And then Pink Floyd in North America, Glenn Povey. Get a roll of honor for people who ordered this uh, before production. You could pre-order it and you were promised to be included on the Roll of Honours and that includes everybody who uh, participated in that. And then a contents page, which pretty much goes by years. And then we've got a nice introduction from Glenn here, where he just talks about the fact that he has written many a book and what he was hoping to achieve with this and some of the roadblocks he ran into. But a great read. Obviously, things like that I'll say for you to read yourself, uh, just to say that it's a, a good read. Again, gives you a bit of an overview of Pink Floyd, the band themselves, and where they were in the USA zeitgeist. As you can see, it's quite extensive as well. Covering things like the Montreal incident in 77 and even up to the wall as well. So we start off, he's actually managed to unearth the very first article that mentioned Pink Floyd. And this was uh, May the 1st, 1966. So a fantastic find. I was quite blown away by this. When it said 66 on the front, I was kind of thinking, what on earth has he unearthed in the USA for 1966? But yeah, this is a mention of Pink Floyd in the East Village, uh, which was a New York City paper. I think it was actually called The Other. Um, but yeah, interesting read how that came about. And then typical with Glenn's previous work, very well laid out, beautiful illustrations. He's backed it all up. We were pleased to be able to contribute some of the uh, pieces from our collection. Uh, so it would fill it out too. Uh, but it goes on to the releases. So as you can see there, the first one would have been Arnold Lane. And he includes the date of the promo release. And then the actual release. And also the Canadian release. This does cover the whole of North America. So yeah, on to see Emily play. Even features the Peter Whitehead film. Tonight, Let's All Make Love in London. And then includes uh, London Line, some TV filming, and then onto the album release of A Piper at the Gates of Dawn. And again, a nice feature here, centre artwork or graphics, just showing exactly what to look for if you're looking at getting either the mono, the stereo or the reissue with the corrected spelling mistakes. And then we look at the uh, US tour which ended up being a bit of a disaster, but that's covered here by press articles and adverts for shows, things like Whiskey A Go-Go on Sunset Strip. Again, some nice artwork here. 
So yeah, you certainly get the feel of it. And that's just the beginning. I, I don't want to spoil this for you. This purpose of this is just really to get across the quality of the work, what exactly it is, uh, is for sale, um, whether it's something that you would benefit from. Uh, personally, I love things like this. You can't have enough resources and enough uh, access to the genuine items like this. Uh, you know, genuine cuttings from papers at the time. And of course, as I said, it does go through bit by bit, year by year, including all their single releases. It would be so nice. And even reissues, the C. Emily Play reissue. Obviously by that time, some lovely double page spreads as well. Obviously quite a famous one there of Roger banging the gong. Yeah, nice photo there again. So Pink Floyd on stage in North America. So yeah, fantastic resource. Something that you'll probably pick up again and again. Something that you can go through. Double check purchases, double check auctions if you're looking at bidding on something. Uh, but fantastic uh, purchase all round. As you can see, the graphic layout is beautiful. Everything's done very well. I know there has been some supply issues on this, uh, as with everything else in the world at the moment. There's a bit of a slowdown. So those of you that have pre-ordered this, it is kind of en route, as it were. Uh, and I know in, certainly in North America itself, ironically, uh, it's, it's probably one of the hardest places to get hold of it. But it is coming. It will be available and you can pre-order it at most sites. So again, just to... Demonstrate here some lovely original ads for gigs. Some stuff even I haven't seen before, so it's really nice to be exposed to it. Us and them singles. Obviously, Dark Side of the Moon was quite well covered back then with singles. And up until the uh, Pompeii release which the adverts typically didn't mention Pompeii. It was more just like the Pink Floyd movie. I didn't think they thought there was any value in using the word Pompeii at the time. Obviously, Pink Floyd were riding on the success of Dark Side of the Moon at the time. So, yeah, as with any of these kind of lookouts and reviews, do I recommend it? 100%. It's a great look. It's Like I say, it's definitely going to be a resource it's one of the things you'll probably read and then put by and then, you know, use it as a resource tool going forward. Um, and again, we finished there with another photo from that photo shoot at the front. And like I say, feels good in the hands. Nice, solid book. Well worth the money. Check it out. Thanks, Glenn.